What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Hunter News Talk. As usual, I'm your host, Patrick Hansen, joined today by the man, Brian DeGenero. How are we doing today, Brian? Fantastic, Pat. How are you? I cannot complain, as usual. Uh, listen, we have a very fun topic to talk about today, and that is Luke Voigt's return to the New York Yankees. Can't be coming at a better time either. Um, but before we do get into that, everyone be sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn on post notifications. We're going live before and after every single Yankees game this season. Stay tuned for that content. But today, let's talk about Luke Voigt. Um, he has not played yet with the Yankees this season, just finished up a rehab stint uh, with the Scranton Rail Riders. And with that, he is returning to the Yankees on Tuesday um, against the Tampa Bay Rays in Tropicana Field. This is huge for the Yankees on so many levels. Um, I would say mostly not only because of the production he's going to bring to the field, because to be honest with you, um, I know he's been tearing it up in AAA, but whenever guys are coming back from injuries, um, I always set the bar kind of low. Just because you don't know what they're going to be like. This is his debut, uh, essentially. Yeah. He hasn't faced Major League pitching yet all season. So I don't have my expectations too high as far as uh, performance on the field goes. But I think his impact on the clubhouse, uh, yeah. kind of providing that captain mentality. Because Luke Voigt is kind of like the spark plug in, in the Yankees' dugout. And inserting him back in there for such a crucial series where the Yankees need to make it known to Tampa that they don't have that mental edge on them. I think the timing can't be any more perfect. Absolutely. I mean, we've seen it throughout the season. The Yankees have struggled to keep up their energy. You know, it just seems like they've just been lifeless at times. And uh, I think with Luke Voigt, you're never going to get that, right? He's always going to bring that energy. He's always going to bring that fire. And uh, we'd we love to see that. And not to, me- not to even mention, you know, the kind of pop that his bat has, um, the impact that his glove has in the field. We'll actually get to see... The infielders playing their actual positions. Luke, I mean, we won't see DJ LeMayu at for first base as much, so that's great. Yeah. Um, so it brings a lot to the Yankees, and, and just in time for a huge series against Tampa. Yeah, and that's exactly my thing. I mean, if we are talking performance-wise, um, he's coming off a, a solid stint with the Rail Riders, where in uh, in five games he launched three home runs, uh, batted three eighty nine with a four seventy six on base giving him a 14, almost 1,500 OPS. Ridiculous. I know it's such a small sample size. (laughs) He's in midseason form. Um, But that's exactly what I'm saying. And I think what you mentioned, kind of just having his presence back in there, not only defensively, but I'm talking in the lineup. Um, Because now the Yankees are able to form a much stronger lineup. You don't have to deal with Mike Ford in there, Tyler Wade in there, um, even Miguel Andujar in there to a point. You're able to kind of insert Luke Voigt into into the middle of that lineup and also provide some protection for Aaron Judge. Because don't get me wrong, like Gio Rochella is a solid four hitter who should also be back on Tuesday as well. But I think even the name that Luke Voigt has, pitchers, are they they really don't want to face him. So they're not going to be walking judge and giving him non-competitive pitches just to get to the four hitter. Um, but realistically, I know while Luke Voigt will probably be batting four once he does come back today, um, I think personally the smartest idea would be for the lineup to go as planned. Uh, one DJ, two Stanton, three judge, four Geo. I'm keeping Geo in that cleanup spot. Like that. And then having like Voigt that. behind him at five. Yeah, I love that. I think that's great. I and mean, we've seen a lot throughout the season that – you know, the second half of the lineup is just kind of dead, you know? But if we, we drop Glaber down to that 6-7 spot, I mean, that makes the lineup so much deeper than seeing him up at 5. So, I mean, it makes a huge difference. Yeah, no, yeah. But, yeah, listen, Um, as we kind of mentioned before, the timing couldn't be more perfect for the Yankees, right? Because they're coming off a really solid homestand, um, which they yeah. really needed after such a pathetic start to the season. Oh, yeah. uh, and now they're kind of above 500, fighting for first place, kind of trying to catch up to the Red Sox, who are going to collapse eventually. Um, yeah. But I think a lot of people aren't really citing the significance of how important it is for the Yankees to walk into Tropicana Field and kind yeah. of ride this hot momentum, uh, ride this wave, if you want to say that. And kind of prove to the Tampa Bay Rays, who have dominated the Yankees the past two seasons, that, listen, like, we're now at full strength. So if you want to give us your best, we can handle it. Um, The Tampa the Tampa Bay Rays could throw anybody they want on them on that mound. With the Yankees lineup now at just about full strength, um, it kind of is at full strength, except for Rudnett Odor uh, on the bench. But mm-hmm. I'm confident uh, toe-to-toe with anybody up there. Because now with Gio and Voight, I think the lineup looks ten times better. Yeah. Yeah, and they've figured a lot of stuff out so far this season. You know, early in the season, just for example, we were trying out the Gary experiment, and that seems to have gone south. So now we're actually playing Higgy a lot, and and that's been great for the starting pitchers. And he's been hitting pretty well, too. So, I mean, let's not discount that. 
this is a different team than uh, than the Rays faced, you know, earlier in the season. I uh, yeah. they have a lot more confidence. They're hitting more consistently. They're hitting, you know, in clutch spots, you know, occasionally. Not as not as much as we'd like, but better than they had been early in the season. Uh, and the starting pitching has really seemed to get it together. So I, I think, you know, like you said, we're riding some momentum now. Now is the time to strike to show this Rays team that, you know, we're not going to be intimidated by you because you're just the freaking Rays. No, yeah. So, and that's exactly my thing. It's like these are the New York Yankees that are kind of getting beat up on by the Rays. It's kind of sick. It's pathetic. Um, but I hope they could kind of capitalize here. But something I do want to kind of relate this to, and I hate going back in history and like comparing situations to the present, oh but this one is so similar. <laughs> Alex Rodriguez returning to the Yankees. Um, I believe he was in May of 2009 as well. Um, I think the significance that Luke Voigt could provide to this team is almost identical to what A-Rod provided to that 2009 team. It was a team that came uh, started off the season so slow, uh, had such high expectations going into the year, and they kind of didn't get the ball rolling until A-Rod came back from injury in, in beginning of May and just yeah. dominated, lit that offense on fire, uh, and just became that spark plug. So I, I don't want to set that bar too high for Luke Voigt and say he's going to be 2009 A-Rod, <laughs> but I think that we definitely have the potential to see that. And based mm-hmm. off that, Brian, let me ask you a question. Yeah. Luke Voigt obviously had a monster season last year, right? He almost mm-hmm. won MVP. Um, but after missing the first month, do we think that Luke Voigt finishes the 2021 season with over under 30 home runs? Ooh, 30 home run. Um, I'm going to go over, man. I, yeah. I have so much confidence in Luke Voigt, man. He's such a good hitter he, all around. Like, it's not just the power. He's a good hitter, and he takes a lot of walks. So, I mean, I, pitchers are going to want to pitch to him. Um, like you said, this lineup is getting deeper. So I, I think that you're going to see a, a fair amount of homers from him. So I could see 30 plus. Yeah, I would have to take the over too, only because I don't know. Like I said, I kind of like to set the expectations low for guys who are coming back from injuries. Sure. But for some reason, it's like I'm looking at Luke Voigt and kind of just looking at his at bats from AAA. Um, the dude's obviously locked in. Um, it's kind of clear that he's been healthy for a little bit now. It's not like mm-hmm. he's just coming back from right. whatever he was uh, going through. Mm-hmm. But I think that he's ready, um, not only physically, but mentally. I think that, listen, Luke Voigt has been watching this team for the past month or so, yeah. and you don't think that he's been itching and dying yeah. to come back and kind of provide his presence in the lineup. So I think that he's going to kind of show up, and this might bite me in the ass, I don't know, but he, mm-hmm. I think he's going to show up and absolutely dominate. I think that by the end of the season – he could be like one of the Yankees' best hitters again. We could see, um, but it's going to be interesting. Regardless of what happens, I think even if he doesn't perform right off the bat, which is totally um, acceptable, I think that just his presence in there is going to be huge. So I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. But having him back is massive. Um, but that is going to wrap things up for today's episode. Everyone, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn on post notifications. Like I always say, Brian, we're going live before and after every single Yankees game this season. So stay tuned for that content. Uh, also, you guys know the deal. Stay happy. Stay healthy. Stay safe. Peace. <laughs>